Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, it's Cynic Alex, and today I want to discuss the inbox expiration adjustment controversy, and I know what that sounds like a bunch of complicated words, um, but basically there's changes being made to future purchases and how they will expire in your inbox. But before we get into that, I just want to quickly address the notice tab that pops up when you log in, saying that there's going to be a maintenance, it's starting in a couple of hours, it's actually for the duration of my live stream, it's from 7 p.m. Eastern to midnight Eastern, it's a five hour maintenance, it's not for an update, it's not for new characters, it's not for new content, if you just read what it says here, it says maintenance is scheduled. Scheduled, um, and it doesn't actually say what you're getting, but uh, or it doesn't actually say what they're doing the maintenance for. We are getting maintenance rewards, but uh, if you click on the notice and you read it, it says that the maintenance is for server stability. So this could be giant boss raid, this could be you know iOS crashes and world boss ultimate, this could be a whole bunch of things. But it's good they're doing server stability. It sucks that it's going to take up five hours during a time when I think a lot of players are playing. But you know, there's really no good time. Everyone plays around the world. There is no good time to um, do server stability. So that's what's coming. It's not a new update. Now let's jump into the real, uh, the, the real important juicy stuff. There was an announcement earlier today about the inbox expiration being adjusted. And basically what was said is that starting in the October update, so not the one coming in September, but the one in October, um, the expiration date of purchased items will be changed to 60 days. Currently, when you purchase items in the uh, shop and they go into your inventory, they have an infinite expiry. So you'll see here in the gift portion, I do have a bunch of stuff that is expiring, one day, one day, five days, two hours. Um, but then you also have stuff down here that says unlimited. So after this change, when I purchase new items, they won't say unlimited, they will say expiry 60 days or 59 days, whatever. Um, but on the flip side, none of the items here will be affected. So that is kind of what's going on and that has created a lot of controversy and a lot of reaction, mostly negative from the community. So it's all detailed here. I don't really want to go into what it is because I'm going to go into much greater detail in it uh, in a minute. And just so that you guys are aware uh, for this video in particular, because I really don't do this for like 99% of my videos, I have made an extensive amount of notes. So if it seems like I'm reading off of something I absolutely am this time, I want it to be as thorough and as neutral and or sort of two-sided as possible. I want to get the side of why this is wrong, and I want to get the other side of why this may be right or why this may make sense um, so that everyone is equally uh, represented, okay? So let's start off. So this change is happening to anything that you purchase in the store, either for crystals or for real money. So things that are things that you obtain that have uh, an infinite sort of uh, cap won't be affected. So let's let's go into a little bit more detail. What is actually getting affected? So they list shop purchases, pop up purchases, which is the same as shop purchases, store bonus items, etc. So store bonus items could be things from event quests, but they could also be things from the alliance um, double bonus days from the shop that are purchased here. So. You know, these things don't have expiry, but if they were to ever have an expiry, um, it would be at most 60 days. They are they are completely eliminating the the infinite um, the infinite expiry system after the October update. But they're going to grandfather in everything um, that happens before that. So anything that you've purchased from the beginning of the game in 2015 up until the next update, the next next update won't be affected. So you can continue to purchase uh, the game as usual. But after the October update, so they're technically giving us about one update, maybe one update in a bit. So they're giving us between five and six weeks notice um, before this actually changes, which I do appreciate. But what is most affected? What purchased resources are most negatively affected by this change? So for the most part, the things that are really hit the hardest are items that have a low maximum capacity. So I'm talking about items like Phoenix Feathers and Mkron Crystals and Mkron Shards. We purchase these and we bank them in our um, gift tab because we can't go over the limit. You can go over the limit, um, but not from your gift tab. You can go over the limit if you get these items from World Boss Booty Boxes, from from, uh, any sort of giveaway chests if you get them from alliance donations which they've recently removed but anyways um, and you can also not alliance donations from alliance members but purchasing in the alliance store um, and you can also go over the limit if you purchase them from the shield lab but that is the only way if I have Mcron crystals in my inbox in my gift tab and I go to try to collect them it will give me the warning that I've reached a capacity 
So this immediately means that anything with a low capacity, so I'm talking Phoenix Feathers, M Crunch Crystals, M Crunch Shards, and Titan Component, or Titan uh, Records, the Titan Books, are all the, the much less valuable to purchase. So these packs, for example, are much less valuable to purchase um, after October. They're still fine now, but after October, these items will have a 60-day expiry. So if there is no X-Men update or X-Men rework or X-Men uniforms between that 60-day period, these items that you had purchased for crystals or for money will literally just poof and be gone. And that is a really tough pill for a lot of players to swallow. Even if you blow hundreds of dollars on these packs, everything here besides the crystals will expire in 60 days after the October update. So that is putting a lot of players in a really rotten mood. And we'll talk about why that's a valid complaint. Now, which purchases are not really as negatively affected? Because it's not really everything in the game that's as negatively affected. So on the flip side, items that have a infinite maximum capacity are not really that negatively affected. So obviously, like, crystals are not that negative, negatively affected because even if there's a 60-day expiry, why wouldn't you collect your crystals? There is no cap on crystals, so you should collect them and just have them. There's, there's no reason not to collect crystals. There's really no reason not to collect crystals. Unless you're trying to fool someone when they look at your account. Um, black Antimatter, Chaos Nornstones. There's always going to be, you know, there's always going to be more of that. And any purchases you make of Chaos Nornstones and, and um, Black Antimatter, any purchases that you make that include those, won't be negatively affected because they have an infinite cap. So you can keep collecting them. You can have, you know, tens of thousands of Black Antimatter and Chaos Nornstones in your inventory. It doesn't matter. Um, same thing goes for other Tier 3 components. So CCF, Cosmic Cube Fragments, Essence of Dimension or Dimension Dust and Titan component packs. Additionally, other things like Uru, Obelisks, ISO-8, uh, UUK, all of those things won't really matter if there's a 60-day expiry because you can collect them indefinitely. You can have hundreds or thousands of them in your inventory at once. Now, keep in mind, it's a little bit worse for Uru and ISO-8 because they individually take up one spot in your inventory. So that does technically negatively affect your inventory if you're the type of person that had a bunch of ISO or a bunch of Uru uh, boxes saved there with an infinite expiry. I mean, it won't, it won't affect you, but it'll affect you in the future if you collect those, because in the future they will have a 60-day expiry. But we'll talk about the inventory a little bit later. Um, and then the most important thing is which purchases now become a lot more awkward or a lot less uh, valuable, a lot potentially a lot less valuable um, since you can't hoard them indefinitely. Well, absolutely, anything that includes anything that has a heavy investment on either bio selectors or X gene selectors. It's not here right now, but there was a limited sale for I think it was a thousand biometric selectors. Those sales will drop in um, purchases drastically, rapidly after the October update because you can't hoard those biometric selectors anymore. Even if you're just hoarding them for future characters or hoarding them for food for native tier twos, they'll have a 60 day timer. That is not an appealing thing for high spending players. So they're not going to purchase them or they're gonna purchase them a lot less. Additionally, anything that includes uh, X-Men materials. So Phoenix Feathers, uh, M-Cron Crystals or M-Cron Shards, they will have an expiry on top of having a very small limited capacity, which makes them a lot less uh, enticing and interesting to purchase. So now let's get into the important stuff here. Why are the players upset? Now I can't actually list out every single reason why every single player is upset. So apologies if I've missed your specific reason for being upset, but I wanna take the most valid arguments that the community has, um, and I want to sort of try and summarize them and distill them. So I think one of the most important things here to, to, to just acknowledge from an emotional and psychological point of view is that the game is changing in a way that is fundamental to how a lot of players play the game. And I know that sounds like a really sweeping generalization and that might sound a bit, you know, like Freudian or whatever, like, oh, you're trying to make all these psychological assumptions about me, Cynic Alex. But a lot of players do hoard resources and that's part of the uh, strategy that we pass on to new players. And I've seen it countless times. Save this, save that. Oh, save it for the next update. Save it for the next, next update. Oh, you don't have to collect that, just save it. This has become a core, fundamental part of the way we play Marvel Future Fight and the way that we interact with other players and we recommend how they should play the game. And that gets passed on to players uh, that join and then they pass it on to other players that join, so on and so forth. That is being fundamentally changed. You can no longer do that. Is it being changed in a way that's totally garbage and worse? That's up for debate. Not, it's not necessarily worse, 
it's just a different and change for most people is not accepted or embraced with open arms the second thing that i think a lot of people are upset about is that hoarding and saving everything until the precise moment when you want to use it is not really an option anymore you still will have the option to save everything that you've purchased from now until october so you could have thousands of purchases and you could make thousands more purchases i'm not telling you to make purchases i'm just saying everything you've purchased until now is not being affected so you're not technically losing anything that you've already invested in you will just have the risk of losing stuff that you've invested in after October um, but that does upset certain players um, and it does make them rethink spending money on this game which is totally understandable um, it also I think for some players means that big spenders or whales will have less motivation to purchase large packs or to purchase the relays because some of the items that they want to keep will have the potential of expiring and even though it might not expire Maybe you look at the way you play and over the over the years that you've been playing, you've never actually let an item expire. Just the the idea that it could expire can make you rethink that purchase. So it's kind of like you go to the grocery store and you really like fruit, but you're looking at the fruit and you're saying, well, you know what? There's a chance that I could buy this fruit and it could rot. It could go bad before I eat them. So I'm just not going to buy the fruit. Why would I risk it and have to throw out this food that I literally pay for and don't get to eat? That's kind of the logic here. They're, they're bringing that expiry to your attention, which I think does turn off some players, and that's fair. Also, I do think that players feel frustrated because Netmarble has released very few um, new characters per update, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. We don't need every update to have tons of characters. There's already almost 200 characters in Marvel Future Fight, so this is more a product of the game getting older and the game having to shift gears and look for new ways for players to find entertainment and purpose rather than just dumping update after update with tons and tons of characters. We want things to change. They should change. So but in a, it, it, it like kind of combined with Netmarble introducing fewer characters per update, there's an even smaller percentage of new characters which are bio selector friendly, which are these items that are most commonly hoarded. I think uh, I think bio selectors and um, uh, you know X Men materials are the most commonly hoarded items in the game because fewer of these characters have been introduced, especially in this year. Um, it creates a lot of anxiety in players. Um, because they can't use their biometric selectors even though they have them. So I actually went and I looked uh, and I did all the math and I did all the calculations. Since the beginning of 2019 with the Fantastic Four update, we've gotten 22 new characters. So that's not bad. In 210 days, a little bit more than half of the year, I believe. Um, or, yeah, a little bit more than half of the year. We've gotten uh, 22 characters. That's a good pace for a game that's going into its fifth year. That's that's really good. That's you know you don't want too many and you don't want too few. So I think 22 is a good number. Now of those 22, only six of them have been biometric selector characters. We had Human Torch and Thing. And again, you can argue that these characters are not biometric friendly because they can be farmed, but that's not what I'm saying. If you can use biometric selectors on them, they're biometric selector friendly. So you have Human Torch and Thing, then you have Minerva and Korath, and then you have Molten Man and Hydro Man. Now, here's where we get into some issues. Even though it's only been 210 days between uh, Doctor Doom, the first character of 2019, and then Silver Surfer, the last character thus far, um, that's been about 35 days per Bioselector character, if you average it out um, you know, over the days and you take those six characters. So 35 days is about one biometric selector character per update, which if you look at the 60 day timer is good because it means that you'll have potentially two characters, um, one in one update, one in another update that you could use those biometric selectors on. Therefore, they won't reach that 60 day expiry and disappear. But here's where we get into some problems. Korath was released on February 20th, 2019. Molten Man and Hydro Man were released on July 2nd, 2019. Although there have been six, there was a gigantic gap of 132 days, more than four months um, between the, the last Biometric Selector character and the one that came after. That is a huge problem. If this um, 60 day timer had been in place back at the beginning of 2019 and people had purchased a bunch of biometric selectors right after Korath, let's say in the next update with Juggernaut, Sabretooth and Warpath, those all would have expired. There was, there was zero biometric selector characters introduced. 
There may have been uniforms here and there for characters that you could argue are biometric friendly, but actual new characters? No, not even one until July, which is unacceptable. So this leads me to the obvious conclusion that if Netmarble is going to go ahead and, and, and remain uh, and keep this expiry, the 60 day expiry uh, change, they need to make a few changes, at least one change to the way that they do updates and the way that they do reworks. So this is my recommendation for Netmarble because having four months in between a bio selector character and only giving us half of that time in which to keep a biometric selector is actually pretty bullshit. You gotta, you gotta release biometric selectors characters more frequently if you're going to do that, or you need to rework them. So here's how it goes. Um, you make sure, Netmarble has to make sure that every other update, there's at least one biometric selector character. That's pretty simple, just not even every update, every other update, as long as it's 59 days or less, you give the community a chance to use their biometric selectors on a brand new character and or again they could combine these ideas or they could take them individually they could and this is the one i like more they could commit to reworking one or more older biometric selector character more frequently rather than doing one rework per year you know last year we got hyperion who's not biometric selector friendly this year at some point we're getting vision who is biometric selector friendly is not a lot to ask it's actually super lazy there are other games marvel contest of champions that rework multiple characters per year i'm talking like a dozen characters per year <gasps> that's like one per month so one or two reworks every update even one rework every other update is not a lot to ask six reworks per up per year is not a lot to ask at all um, and so if they committed to reworking one older character every single update it would be even better because then characters could or players could choose if they want that character with their biometric selectors that are expiring or they can look to the next update, they could wait for the next update and see if they wanna choose that character. So even then, you're giving players the opportunity to sort of a short-term hoarding. Um, and the, you know, let's say in November, we're gonna rework Ultron. And then in December, uh, we don't know who we're gonna rework yet, but we'll announce it soon. So players can think, oh man, do I wanna save these biometric selectors that I just purchased for Ultron? They're gonna expire in 58 days. Um, maybe they're gonna rework a character that I like more than Ultron in December. And then at the end of November, they release, hey guys, in three weeks, we're gonna be reworking Angela. So now, oh man, I'm definitely gonna save my selectors for Angela, or you know what? I changed my mind. I do wanna use my selectors on Ultron. And you're still giving players choice. You're still giving players the opportunity to make a decision and have their hoarding or their saving be rewarded. Um, and you're also, you're lessening that blow, that, that punishment, that burden of having a 60 day uh, expiry. If they just change this expiry and they don't rework any new characters or they're very lazy as they've been about reworking characters only doing one per year, which is honestly ridiculous, um, then I think that this will continue to be um, something that the community is upset about and it won't go away and it'll kind of just hang as a cloud over the game for a long time and that's honestly going to put off some players who are new they're gonna be like you know what I don't this game this community seems really uh, you know toxic or they seem kind of frustrated or they, they seem like they're in strife with each other I'm not even gonna play this game I'm gonna go look at another game where people are kind of happier to play their game and it's also gonna cause some players to just straight up quit um, another opportunity, another idea that Netmarble can, can put into action for how to mitigate the frustration that players have over this change in expiry is to give us more inventory space. If they were to give players as a sign of goodwill an extra 100 or 200 inventory slots for free, this would go a long way to easing some of these frustrations that players have because it's sort of a give and take. You want the devs, even though they're taking something away from you, you want them to feel like they still care about you. And so by acknowledging another problem in the game, Inventory Management Simulator 2019, uh, patent pending, you, you do a lot to sort of say, hey, listen, we have to change this because of these reasons. It's, I know it's not really nice for you. You don't really like it. You're kind of frustrated. So I'm going to give you this 
um, that, that, that will reduce some of your frustration in a different part of the game. You know, it's really it's going to be really hard for us to see the justification of Netmarble improving server stability in the future, because for most players that don't have any crashes now anyways, they're not going to care either way. So it's just a negative for them. And then players that are experiencing crashes, while they may still experience fewer crashes, if they experience even one crash, they're still going to be really pissed, right? The, the, the bar that you set, the expectation that you set when you talk about things like server stability, server maintenance, database performance, that makes people feel like you're going to fix things and make them perfect. Even though it's not logical, that's how people feel. So when it's not perfect, and if it fails even once after that, they're going to be like, well, what the hell did I give all that up for? I gave up this expiry, now it's every 60 days, and the game still crashes. Why am I playing this game? So by giving the player something, that a little bit of, in, of inventory space, extra inventory space, and or by committing to reworking more old characters, you really do a lot to sort of balance the scales and make players feel like you care, and you're not just doing this to, you know, gouge them or, you know, make purchases less enticing overall. I do have to say as an aside, and I may make a video about this later, but I don't want this one to run too long as it's already 20 minutes. Um, I do acknowledge that Netmarble kind of put themselves in a tough position the way that the game was designed from the beginning versus now. Because when the game was originally designed, if you go look at past updates, pretty much every update for the first year had tons of biometric selector characters. Almost every single character was biometric friendly. Uh, and there was like five or six characters per update. So that shit was just pumping out. But back in the day, back then, you had to pay like $50 to, to, to get a character to six stars. You had to pay like $30 for like 50 bios of the character. So because they've devalued the cost of biometric selectors um, heavily, from, from when they were first introduced, I'm talking journalistic integrity here, guys. Um, from when they were introduced until now, it's kind of forced them to not only make fewer biometric selector characters because they know how cheap the biometric selectors are, and they also give them away in Shadowland, but also to possibly do what they're doing now, which is to create an expiry so that you know veteran players don't just dump all their resources uh, update after update and catch up and you know unlock everything instantly. And that I think is one of the positives of this change is that it's going to limit how much veterans can hoard and it's going to create less of a gap between newer players and low spending veterans, uh, even just because you can't really hoard everything and you will have to make decisions and you will have to improve your roster rather than playing super passively. Now I want to do uh, just a really brief assessment and to analyze Netmarble's reasoning for their change because this is kind of where I think a lot of people are going to speculate. So Netmarble says this is due to the number of increasing players who have been playing the game for a long time. The inbox expiration period was adjusted to maintain a more stable database performance. Now. I'm not someone who can comment with accuracy and knowledge about these sort of database performance issues because I don't work on video game development. I don't work on server side stability. I'm not an IT guy when it comes to video games and that kind of stuff and server space and all that uh, issue. However, let's look at other games. It is true that in most other online games, whether they're mobile or they're not mobile, there is an expiry system. So in a game like Marvel Contest of Champions, anytime you collect an item and it doesn't fit in your inventory, and every single item in the game in Contest of Champions has a limit that you can hold in your inventory, whether it's a limit of five or 10 or 20 or 50. Um, if you go over that limit, the item will go into an overflow sort of second inventory. That second inventory has a 30 day expiry. So if you don't collect those materials in 30 days, you lose them. So that encourages players in Marvel Contest of Champions, and I know some of you guys hate that game and you think it's a total scam and the comparison is ridiculous, but in that game, um, players have to make decisions more rapidly and more actively and they have to okay they have to say to themselves okay i have to upgrade a character this month because my resources are going to expire i have to upgrade this character so it doesn't necessarily make the game worse it just makes the way that you play the game different other games for example pc games like uh, world of warcraft they have a gifting system between players 
but even for those gifting systems, um, when you send a player an item, it will have an expire an expiry, which could be as little as seven days or three days, um, and as long as 30 days again um, on items that are sent between players. And even games like that, like Guild Wars 2 or World of Warcraft, those games don't even have microtransactions. You're not even paying for what the other player is sending you, but those still have expiry. So there is some internal logic here maintained among all games, Sure, it could be a conspiracy, or it could be that all of these games are just trying to get as much money and milk as much money out of you as possible. I'm not denying that fact, but it also is a possibility that it's, it is what they're saying, that it is database performance. Um, and so, although I don't have the knowledge, it does make sense. Um, and to go a little bit further into this, again, I'm speculating, but to go a little bit further into this, um, the game probably doesn't save all of the account data for things like your gift inventory um, on the server side, on the client side of things. The client side of things would be like the game data that you download. Because things that are saved client side, client side would be like on my phone, on your phone, on your tablet, on your computer. Things that are saved client side are much easier to hack into. They're much easier to get at for people who want to look at the code, for people who want to do things that are illegal and sort of hurt the game overall. So when items or when data gets saved client side, um, it can create or can give uh, people who want to hack an opportunity to duplicate items or to manipulate the values of items so to say, you know, okay, well, I know that the, my crystals are saved client side and the game thinks I have 7,500 crystals. So I'm going to find that value in the game code that's saved on my phone. I'm going to find that value for 7,352. And I'm just going to delete it and I'm going to change it to 99999. And then I'm going to save my game. I'm going to close my app and, and open it up again. Oh, look, Netmarble, I have, I have 99,000 crystals. So obviously that information is not saved client side. It has to be saved or it's probably saved server side in a server side cache. So it is theoretically possible that if enough players, and you can look at my inventory for an example, um, if enough players are doing this and hoarding these resources, and I'm not even... Um, I'm not even VIP 20. I'm VIP 17. There are definitely players above me who have spent more money. It's not a competition, but I'm just saying I'm probably not even in the 1%, uh, the top 1% of spending players. And I have all these items saved up. Who knows how much data this is costing server side in a server side cache. You take another clip from another friend of mine who's VIP 20, and you can see that they're just scrolling through and there's just hundreds of items. Uh, that they haven't uh, used that have infinite expiry. So if you multiply this by hundreds or thousands of players, that could end up being a lot of database space that is sort of slowing down or making the game more sluggish for people. It could have unintended consequences in other parts of the game. And as the game introduces more new game modes that have an online component, like let's say Giant Boss Raid, who knows? Maybe if, if it has to load in, if it, you know, for whatever reason, if it has to load in even parts of all of my gifting tab when I join a giant boss raid match, that could be the reason why, again, I'm purely speculating, but that could be the reason why or it could possibly, um, you know, contribute to crashes and disconnects. But additionally, we also have to acknowledge the fact that Netmarble could be doing this to make money. And I do acknowledge that this is a possibility. By making, expi by making items expire in 60 days, um, at least some players, not all, but some players will be forced to make additional purchases because the items expire or they'll change the way that they spend. They'll change their spending habits rather than purchasing a bunch of stuff at once and then not purchasing for a long time. They might they may end up purchasing things um, more frequently in, in a lower amount. So rather than spending $100 in one month and then not spending any for the next two months, they might spend $20, $20, $20 spread out over you know two months that could also push people to spend more money because they're not able to keep track of how much they're spending overall additionally there's the psychological factor again i'm trying to cover every base here there's a psychological factor of seeing things in your inventory if i'm thinking of spending money but then i go to my gift tab and i'm like man i have so much shit. why do i need more i might not i might not spend more money on the game i might save my money and spend it somewhere else but if this tab is constantly empty, that might encourage you to be like, man, there's nothing here. Maybe I should go and spend something. Maybe I, maybe I do need some items. Um, and so that that also does come into uh, come into question. 
Finally, from both the perspective of spending more money and playing the game comes the idea of having an active player base, player base versus a passive player base. Um, perhaps this change that they're doing for the inventory uh, expiry is being done in a small way to discourage players from being extremely passive and playing the game for a few weeks, hoarding a bunch of items, and then just taking months off of the game uh, and then coming back. Maybe the strain on the database from players that are doing that is not worth having those players that are sometimes active. Remember, like a few months ago, they changed the um, rules for inactive accounts. And they said that rather than keeping accounts forever, after 180 days, if you don't log in, we're going to delete your account. Perhaps that was also done for database performance. And this is the next step that they're taking to try to improve that even more for the improvement of people who are always playing the game so that they can get the best experience possible because they're logging in every single day. Um, and so in addition to that, you have the idea of, well, if things expire, it keeps you on your toes. And so, you know, you have to be playing a bit more actively since you're not allowed to save items for years and you have to make decisions. Okay, I'm going to upgrade this character. I'm going to upgrade this uniform, so on and so forth. So those are all the ideas that I had. I know it's a super long video. Let me know what you guys think of the side of the players and why they're upset and also the side of Netmarble and why this may truly be um, for a more stable database performance for the future that would benefit the players uh, in game modes where they otherwise get disconnected or lag or glitch out or freeze or crash entirely and the app closes. I don't know. I don't have all the answers, but I wanted to present everything to you in as thorough a fashion as possible so apologies for the gigantic like 25 minute clip 31 minute clip holy shit subscribe if you enjoy the content you want to support me and of course if you like what you see i hope to see you again tomorrow take care